Good morning, this is Ian King Live, an hour of business and economic news from the heart of the city. Now, Sri Lanka has asked the International Monetary Fund for urgent help following a financial crisis that has engulfed the island state. It's halted its debt payments, stoking fears that its economy could be about to collapse. Protests have erupted in the country over food shortages and soaring fuel prices. Well, joining me now from the Sri Lankan capital, Colombo, is Mataza Jaffaji, chair of the Advocata Institute and elected director of the Colombo Stock Exchange. Morning to you, sir. How did... Sri Lanka come to be in this state? Well, uh, leading up to a change in government, this new government came in in 2019. Country's economy was slowing because there were many macroeconomic shocks that were, had happened before that, and we were carrying a lot out of debt. The new government, with the aim of stimulating the economy, put across some very aggressive tax cuts. They lost about 35% of their revenue, and then COVID hit us. So when COVID hit us, uh, international euro bonds started trading at about a 30% discount to book value. And uh, the rating was cut and we were unable to roll over our debt. And COVID continued and, you know, commodity prices and the Ukrainian war came. So we simply ran out of reserves and we had to put a cessation, a temporary suspension on debt service payments. Now, Sri Lanka is currently witnessing its worst economic crisis since its independence. With the rising inflation and lack of basic staples, the condition is steadily shifting from bad to worse. The newly elected Sri Lankan cabinet will be meeting for a session later today to discuss proposals for a possible 21st constitutional amendment. According to reports, Sri Lankan Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa will present the proposals submitted by political parties. This will be the first meeting of the newly appointed cabinet. The crucial session is scheduled to take place at 5 p.m. local time. Sri Lanka's main opposition, which includes parties like the Samagi Jana Balawegaya and the United National Party, have already handed over their party's proposals to the Speaker for the drafting of the 21st Amendment. The general public is the one who are suffering the most amid this ongoing economic crisis. The South Asian nation of 22 million people has struggled to pay for essential imports after a steep drop in foreign exchange reserves. The devaluation in currency along with soaring inflation has made it difficult for the common man in Sri Lanka to purchase even basic staples. Every single item in the country has gone up by at least half a dollar in recent days. Along with medicine, Lentils, sugar, vegetables, the cost of everyday items like soap and biscuits has also risen dramatically over the last few days. The price of a bar of laundry soap, which was somewhere between 60 and 70 rupees, has gone up to 105 rupees, while that of the body soap now stands somewhere at around 170 rupees apiece. The rising inflation has triggered massive anti-government protests across the country last few weeks. In the latest, Sri Lanka features a principal opinion that the nationwide strike today to denounce the government's inefficient handling of the crisis. The strike is today a show of support for public protests in Sri Lanka. This time, the day after thousands of university students took to the streets of Colombo to denounce the government's failure in minimizing the crisis. Protesters attempted to march outside the president's office, but blocked by police barricades. They then moved towards the residence of Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa to demand his resignation. In the past 24 hours, Sri Lankans have experienced a massive hike in fuel prices, seen a new cabinet sworn in, and heard promises of constitutional reform. The catalyst for all this? The country's worst ever economic crisis since independence in 1948. A crisis that's left Sri Lankans short of medicines, fuel, electricity, and above all, food. The country is running out of foreign exchange, 
to pay for these essential imports. The blame for most of this is falling on economic mismanagement by the government of President Kotabia Rajapaksha. He has resisted calls to resign and on Monday he appointed a new cabinet. This is what he told them. I believe we should have gone to the International Monetary Fund much earlier. Not providing agrochemicals to farmers is also a mistake. We will now give fertilizer to our farmers once again. People are suffering because of the economic crisis. And I deeply regret it. During the 2022 IMF and World Bank Spring meetings in Washington, D.C., IMF Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva and other senior members of IMF management met with the Sri Lankan delegation led by Finance Minister Ali Sabri and Governor of the Central Bank Nandalal Virasinghe. The discussion centered policy actions to address economic challenges the country's economy is faced with as Sri Lanka struggles to pay for imports amid plunging foreign exchange reserves, a deepening debt crisis, soaring cost of living and rising inflation. Issuing a statement, IMF Sri Lanka Mission Chief Masahiro Nozaki referred to April 18-22 to 22 talks between the Sri Lankan delegation and the IMF team as fruitful technical discussions on Sri Lankan authorities' request for an IMF-supported program. The discussions covered recent economic and financial developments in Sri Lanka, the need for implementing a credible and coherent strategy to restore microeconomic stability and the importance of stronger social safety nets to mitigate the adverse impacts of the current economic crisis on the poor and vulnerable. The latest IMF statement notes that the IMF team welcomed the authorities' plan to engage in a collaborative dialogue with Sri Lanka's creditors. Chief of the Mission of IMF in Sri Lanka, Masahiro Nozaki, assured in his statement that going forward, the IMF team will support Sri Lanka's efforts to overcome the current economic crisis by working closely with the authorities on their economic program and by engaging with all other stakeholders in support of a timely resolution of the crisis.